thank you everyone uh, to joining uh, me today uh, in this workshop and my name is Anand Tiwari and I am an information security professional. I have 6 plus ex experience in information security. So I am a pen tester so I do lot web mobile network infrastructure pen testing. I am working with not so secure company and I am also author of open source tool called ArchySec which is an open source vulnerability assessment and management tool. Right? So you can find me on all social platform using Anand Tiwari CS. Uh, a quick uh, introduction about my company. Uh, my company is IT security specialist uh, com uh, which providing cutting edge IT security consultancy and training. So we are uh, providing consultancy on penetration testing and also we are providing the training on all these uh, listed. Let's dive into uh, the actual topic in hand. Uh, so the agenda for today start with what is DevSecOps, why do we need DevSecOps, how do we actually go about starting with DevSecOps, what kinds of tool chain can be used, is there some kinds of a setup that can we get start with it and some sample implementation or one two case study around it. So a quick uh, disclaimer, I will be listing a lot of tools but it is not an exhaustive list. What I mean to say is that I do not or we do not endorse or recommend any specific tool or vendor. Your choice of tool should totally depend on your environment. So my recommendation would be to test and validate before going implementation any idea in your environment. So uh, before we begin, I wanted uh, you guys to uh, just go and register so that I can uh, just uh, distribute uh, DevSecOps Lab VM uh, to everyone who joining this uh, workshop uh, because uh, this lab is more than uh, 13 GB uh, and uh, I think it's not place where you can just go and download it, right? So I will. I will uh, distribute through a email so that uh, you can just go at uh, your home and just download and start practicing. So here what I am going to cover it, I will talk all about and give the all practical implementations of DevSecOps, how do we go about it and how we can automate things. I will show the scripts and everything included inside our lab. So uh, when you go back to at home, you can just download this lab and uh, you can start practicing on uh, this lab, right? So you can uh, quickly uh, just take a snap or just uh, save this URL and just re register on, on this URL so that we can uh, distribute our lab. Now, uh, what is DevSecOps, right? So uh, DevSecOps basically a process or an effort where you're trying to be secure by default, right? So how do you achieve a secure by default state, right? So you can start with integrating security via tools or you can start with creating security as a code culture and you need to be start promoting cross scaling. So instead of having three team, uh, doing three different jobs like dev, sec, off, you need one unified team which will basically take care of all these three components. That's the aim that we have for DevSecOps. Now, uh, why do we need uh, DevSecOps? Uh, DevOps uh, which comes up with uh, dev and operation uh, combining together performing rapid development deployment, right? So the problem uh, with that is uh, the security in traditional form cannot keep up, right? So let's take an example of pen testing. So pen testing required like three days or four days to complete, right? So, uh, so it's like when you are doing a development deployment and maybe you are uh, deploying, deploying your ap application more than like 20 time, right? 
So uh, you can't wait for pen testing like three days or four days, and you cannot have afford to have three days and uh, four days time to uh, wait for the pen test, right? So you need to get those things done at a rapid pace, and that's where DevSecOps comes into the picture. So it's make it it easier for you have to security as a part of your process, a part of your pipeline, and that's only way going forward it, right? So if you want to keep uh, pace with uh, rapid development, you need to have security as your, your part of your process. So uh, conventionally, this is how normal uh, DevOps uh, cycle looks like. Uh, so uh, start with the developer workstation, uh, developer wrote the code, committed the code inside this uh, source code repository, and then they are building using CI CD server, and then uh, might be they are de uh, deploying on staging or production server, and then they are doing monitoring, right? So at the end of stage, people realize that they need security testing done on their application, right? And they did uh, security testing and they found uh, like multiple vulnerabilities, right? And those vulnerabilities goes back to the actual developer, right? And like the problem here is maybe developer started working on different environment, started working on different project, right? So you can imagine the time required to be get back into the root code of uh, the code block and work together mitigating the issue and moving forward with it, that's a lot of time you are investing on it, right? Whereas if you shift it slightly, let's say around the build step, you do automated source code review and you found one uh, SQL injection, right? So as soon as that found, the steps is something that happened very close to the developer. So as soon as a developer committed the code, it goes to the build process and automated code review happens. As soon as that happens, you found a bug got reported instead of wasting time in other processes, right? So you immediately started, uh, started toward mitigating and it in the parallel side, there is a one safety feature that's come up because there is an error, right? So the build did not proceed and there was no deployment that happens. So you are safe that bug getting exposed to the public. Now, how do we go about doing DevSecOps, right? So I'm going to talk about lots of uh, tool automation, but automation is one part of the process. So you can not have DevSecOps until, unless you accept it as a culture and moving toward making it ground reality in your organization, right? So I will talk about culture in some time. Uh, so initially I'm uh, going to talk about how do we go injecting security in your uh, DevOps uh, pipeline, right? So I have taken uh, a sample, uh, same pipeline that we had and I have added a security component on it, right? So uh, at the uh, at the uh, start with the right uh, from the developer, uh, we have uh, like uh, pre-commit hooks or ID plugin, which can help them export basic bugs and then pre-build where you can do the uh, like performing SAS, DAS and other stages to the QA staging and production, right? So all the data getting uh, together in a central place called vulnerability management. So uh, I'm going to talk about each and every section uh, quickly, and then we will move forward to a demo where we'll see these in action. So as you can see on the top, the, there is a, a DevOps pipeline, and in the bottom, uh, this is DevSecOps pipeline, which is taken reference from the Jenkins uh, uh, pipeline. So start with the pre-commit hooks, right? So pre-commit hooks helps you is uh, not leaking the credentials. So I have seen many times developers committed their access key or, or the SSH key on the uh, public repository. And the pre-commit hook installed in the uh, developer workstation and developer can bypass and break the chain, 
so you can't uh, consider it as a foolproof safety right so it work on a uh, regular expression and uh, you can write your own pattern and again it's not a final solution so you need to still have look for other things but uh, you can get uh, like uh, the initial warning and people get an idea accidental damage will not happen now id security plugins right so again uh, you can have plugins uh, pre installed in uh, your id environment uh, id uh, plugin provide you uh, to spot very basic mistake and uh, not able to spot uh, complex uh, uh, issues right so it's uh, useful to stop uh, writing insecure code or example like uh, uh, using md5 algorithm right so let's suppose developer uh, started uh, using the md5 algorithm so it uh, id plugin will going to alert uh, developer uh, you are using md5 algorithm which is uh, outdated and it's breakable right so uh, the idea uh, is to not find all bugs but rather assist the developers not making mistakes right so things that uh, could be easily encounter and you can get the idea and move on with it now this secret management right so uh, i have seen like credentials often used to store configuration file uh, in in writing the code right so i talked about how developers committed their keys and credentials while pushing the code inside the repository right so the question is where we need to keep the secrets right so uh, we we need have some uh, secret management interface hopefully uh, with all our devops environment we have uh, already having some secret managements like uh, hashicorp vault or aws uh, secret managers so like uh, we can uh, use this secret management uh, solution to store our secrets and uh, we have to also ensure that keep uh, using for team uh, and uh, entire code base now uh, is interesting aspect is uh, like software composition analysis right so all of us talk about that we develop software right so effectively we write maybe like 10% and 20% of the software and all other part basically import reference and other modules that we have used right so these all are third party code and that we are using and that generally become like say major factor of attacks and major factor of the vulnerabilities right so uh, you can imagine if you, if you are using open source libraries uh, on in your uh, software and uh, that libraries are outdated and uh, like like you need have some check so that you can figure out the old version of your libraries and you can eliminate the vulnerabilities of that libraries right so uh, there are uh, major languages uh, which are uh, using the packages so you need have uh, those check placed so that you can eliminate the vulnerabilities so uh, we looked uh, at our uh, uh, source composition analysis now let's uh, looks into uh, our on written scanning uh, on written code right so it's called static analysis or we call like sas right so uh, this is basically where you go about and run automated code review tool and which will uh, able to pick out easy or simple vulnerabilities let's suppose uh, cross site scripting right so you have written the uh, logic uh, in your code and and that logic uh, is uh, not properly sanitizing and uh, something is not uh, properly using the uh, uh, code uh, which is reflecting uh, on your page right so this tool uh, again uh, would be very massively painful to use and you are using them for the first time so i have seen like uh, source code review tools digging out maybe like 500 or 900 pages of the uh, report when you run the first time right so but the important uh, part of this static code review tools is you need to train them like if you are running uh, source code uh, analysis and uh, you are running the static analysis on the, your code uh, so you need to have 
like train them and and you need to have uh, like run the multiple time on your code right so you can find the uh, false positive vulnerabilities and you have to eliminate the false positive vulnerability by running the multiple time on your code right so uh, so so they are uh, generic in nature they don't have a specific in context around your application so you need to uh, again uh, train them and run couple uh, of iteration identify what they are picking as a false positive and then you co can go back to the uh, uh, actual developer who developed this uh, uh, these uh, static uh, tools and uh, you can ask them to remove uh, uh, the false positive uh, they are finding right Now, uh, once you, uh, you have looked uh, at the static components, there are still place where you can not be found uh, the static components like uh, uh, they are uh, when you deploying your application, applications are uh, like dynamically uh, deployed and uh, you need to have find the vulnerabilities uh, running by the dynamic scans, right. So, uh, so depending on your on your environment there might be different issue that can crop up right so secondly you can also use the dash stage uh, to validate the sas stage let's suppose sas has found the vulnerabilities and uh, you are not uh, you are not comfortable with those vulnerabilities maybe they, they are uh, false positive right so but if you run the dash stage and uh, in the dynamic analysis scan you have fi find the same vulnerabilities right so you can uh, you can just uh, match with this uh, sas and dash and you can confirm about uh, th these vulnerabilities as actually uh, exist in your uh, code right so this way you can uh, just uh, utilize uh, sas and das uh, together in in your uh, C, uh, in your pipeline so uh, next is uh, like infrastructure uh, structure scan uh, so as a code uh, you, like you, uh, you have uh, deploy your whole infrastructure right so uh, you might be you are using docker kubernetes or uh, containerized solutions uh, uh, which have image where application can be uh, deployed on so that container is your base image right so you need to have check or you need to have uh, scan where you can just scan the uh, base image or base container right so uh, so i have seen uh, like uh, in the docker or uh, docker hub uh, many uh, are uh, are the like vulnerable uh, images are uploaded and they are maybe malicious uh, uh, images in, in inside the hub right so before uh, deploying your application on on the uh, top of the container you need to have check where you can go about and scan whole the uh, your base image right so uh, that's where we are uh, need to be have a security in infrastructure as a code now uh, some of the organization have follow certain compliance uh, some of the organization don't have a specific uh, compliance but then we have want follow certain uh, compliance right, uh, benchmarks right so uh, in that one scenario again uh, we can have compliance built as a code we can write the scripts we have multiple tools allow uh, to write the uh, those scripts uh, and uh, we can embed uh, your compliance as a structure with the code and then we can keep it within a repository right and manage it and whenever new compliance check are required added and those can be tested again and again so i talk about a bunch of different stages and all these stages are going to generate the reports right you have uh, integrated multiple tools uh, in every stage right so you need uh, you need one central place where you can dump all your data all your vulnerability data where you can go and uh, do the vulnerability management so i have seen like uh, like 
DevOps team or, or security team never likes to create a reports and never likes to go about and managing the reports, right? So we need vulnerability management place in our uh, our process, our DevOps process, where we can uh, dump all the uh, all the generated data from the uh, multiple tools. Now, once we have environment deployed and we are running uh, everything in pipeline, so it's feel like our job is done, right? So, but that's where our job actually started, right? So, once we have deployed our pipeline for the first time, we need feedback, right? So, we have done a bunch of steps. Now, we, how do we know about uh, and uh, uh, how do we know this actually works and how do we validate these things right so that's where alerting and monitoring will comes into the picture we can keep monitoring our environment see if an attack is happening or something trying an attack right someone uh, if someone trying to attack we can uh, easily catch uh, those attack and we can uh, respond those attack right if they are uh, not uh, getting, uh, let's suppose uh, if uh, if the attacker trying to attack and they are uh, not getting success, we have succeeded, deploy some safety uh, precaution in our uh, whole uh, DevOps process. Now another point uh, which uh, I like I wanted to pointing out uh, and like people are forgetting about uh, to uh, uh, this asset monitoring. The assets, when we talk about assets, uh, we generally talk about we have these many uh, servers and uh, and that's about only people uh, listing down it, right? But when we talk about asset, your GitHub, your all whatever the public uh, available, your assets are your assets and you need to have, uh, you need to have uh, like monitor on your assets, right? So maybe uh, they disclose the vulnerabilities uh, uh, using the your uh, public uh, repo or or maybe uh, like if if you have facebook uh, pages right so maybe it disclose some some of the information of your organization so all all these are your assets so you have to you have to like you need to be monitor your these assets so uh, this is uh, a sample implementation of Java uh, where uh, like uh, these all the tools implemented and uh, using the Jenkins pipeline uh, we uh, just I have in, in integrated uh, on every stage of uh, the security tools and every stage of integrating security tools. So I just wanted to go through uh, this uh, through the video and then I will show uh, in the VM how does it work. So start uh, with the uh, first stage, which is, which is a SAST, uh, dynamic, uh, uh, like, uh, this is a dependency check and find check bug integrated in the first uh, step, uh, where we are uh, finding this uh, software composition uh, analysis and uh, where we are doing the uh, static analysis. Next stage is uh, DAS, uh, third, next is infrastructure scan and then uh, uh, we deploy the WAF, right? So this is how uh, it's look like uh, on the top uh, we have DevOps pipeline, uh, it's st start with the build and then artifactory where we are deploying our, uh, uh, uploading our packages and then we are, uh, uh, we are provisioning our staging and, uh, and then we are deploying our ap application on staging and then doing the UAT test and then uh, we provisioning our production and this is how DevOps process looks like but in the bottom we have injected security on every stage stages right so you, you can see after the artifactory deploy we have integrated the SAST uh, and then we have DAST and then infrastructure scan compliance scan and then we are uh, deploying as a WAF.
So, uh, first I talked about uh, pre-commit hook, right. So, uh, developers by mistakenly committing their access key or uh, credentials over the uh, public repository. So, how we can, uh, how we can alert them, how we can uh, not uh, allow to uh, not commit uh, their secrets and all those things, right. So, we have implemented the talisman uh, where uh, we are uh, just uh, figuring out uh, uh, by s doing uh, by searching all over the code. So as you can see, uh, as you can see, if uh, if the talisman found the AWS key or any any secrets in your code, it's going to alert uh, them uh, to your developer, right? So developer can get to know. Okay, uh, uh, in our code, these secrets are going to be leaked. So they can just remove and then they can go and commit the code. So next is a software composition analysis where we are implementing WASP dependency check where uh, we are going to uh, we are going to search about uh, open source libraries and uh, we are not using open source uh, vulnerable library in our software right. So we are doing the scanning uh, using a dependency check. So in your pipeline as you can see we have uh, given the rule uh, if more than like 10 high vulnerability your pipeline not going uh, uh, not going to proceed further right it's going to be stopped so this way developers can get the feedback like uh, in their software these are the vulnerability these numbers of vulnerability so they need to be have fixed and then uh, go forward it so let's fix the issue uh, like we are using a vulnerable start version. So uh, just remove the start version and then we committed the code and then yeah the vulnerability has like went down. Uh, so I uh, intensely left five high risk because of the showing uh, how this uh, pipeline looks like. Now is SAST uh, using the find sec bug integrated. So, as you can see, uh, we have given the rule uh, there, there should not be any high vulnerability in your code. So, so it's found the vulnerability and uh, we got the feedback and then we remove the code and or we just uh, uh, fix the vulnerabilities and then we committed the code. Now it's uh, a dash we using the wash zap. So uh, this is uh, where uh, we integrated with the uh, wash zap to do the dynamic scan on our uh, staging environment, right? So uh, we have integrated with the mail system where where uh, we, you can get the email. So dash takes like more than like sometimes it take like one day or two day or three days. So in in your pipeline if you are running more than 15 minute or 20 minutes so it would not work right. So what we have did uh, we have integrated the uh, uh, dynamic scanning uh, we are not waiting for that uh, we have integrating with mail system and we uh, like we going forward it and once the scan has completed we got the stats of uh, this dynamic scan and according to that we take the decision whether we have to deploy our application on uh, server or, or not. So uh, next thing is uh, uh, in our whole uh, uh, this lab we are using uh, lots of container. Uh, uh, Docker container. So, we need to have uh, uh, like find out vulnerable containers we are not using in our staging or production server. So, we are using Clare uh, and uh, for the uh, vulnerability assessment we are using OpenBAS. Uh, Clare has run the scan and then uh, OpenBAS also started the scan. and you can get the notification uh, once the scan has completed. Now uh, 
uh, uh, we are using inspec uh, for doing the compliance uh, as a code so uh, uh, unit uh, we are doing uh, like uh, we are complying our tomcat server where we are do going to deploy our ap application on production so once everything is fine then we are going to give uh, the approval uh, to deploy our application on production Now uh, we have uh, deployed the WAF, this is how the application uh, looks like and uh, let us suppose attacker wants to do the SQL injection or something attack on your application, you get the alert about uh, uh, the where from where attack happening and what types of attack going on and also it is not going to allow. Now uh, I talk about the vulnerability management uh, where uh, we are using archery sake. Uh, uh, to do the vulnerability management. So, whatever you run the scan uh, in your pipeline CI CD pipeline, all these tools generate the data and those data feed inside the archery, right. So, as you can see, uh, the all data is uh, placed in the central, uh, central place and where uh, consolidated and, uh, and you can manage and you can mark as a false positive, you can do tons of things uh, and you can pr prioritize the vulnerabilities in, in your uh, organization. If, if you are uh, doing the development, uh, you can go and check uh, what types of project having, what types of vulnerabilities, right. So let me go quickly uh, to the uh, VM, uh, what I am going to be distribute to all and you can go and just check uh, and all these scripts, all the tools already uh, integrated and all the uh, setup we have already done. So, you can go and check this uh, VM uh, to do practice from yourself uh, in, in your home. So, this is uh, how our application looks like, this is uh, a vulnerable eShopee uh, ap application. Uh, we uh, created where we are doing uh, like the DevOps process and uh, and then we integrating uh, security uh, in DevOps process so that we can eliminate the vulnerabilities, we can remove the vulnerabilities and m make as a secure application. So uh, this is how Jenkins uh, uh, looks like. Uh, so, all the uh, tools uh, we have like uh, using the vault, uh, we are using WaveScope uh, which going to monitor your all containers. We are using mail catcher uh, to get the notifications. Uh, we are using ArchySec to do the vulnerability management. Okay, so and then uh, like this is how <laughs> that <laughs> that's, uh, dashboard looks like. So uh, like you are running uh, DevOps uh, like uh, DevOps or DevSecOps pipeline, CI CD pipeline, uh, and you have integrated multiple tools, right? So all the tools listed here. And uh, here is our uh, production uh, server. Uh, let me go inside the Jenkins. Okay, so I have already created the uh, CI/CD pipeline uh, for uh, multiple stages. So, before that I wanted to go with the code, so the code is uh, 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 using the uh, Atom uh, ID, uh, the code is uh, all the code written in the Java. So, uh, in the pipeline folder we have uh, like for the Jenkins you need uh, one Jenkins file and you need a Jenkins script to create a whole uh, CI CD pipeline, right. So, uh, there are like uh, 
first stage is DevOps. So, you can go and uh, just copy and paste in Jenkins file and then commit the code uh, inside the uh, we are using uh, integrated the git right. So, once you committed our pipeline will be start right. So, here uh, Jenkins pipeline I have uh, like first started the SCM. So, that was uh, like blank. So, it is not given any uh, stages right. So, as you can see this is the blank. So, let's uh, let's go about other stages uh, where uh, I just integrated the uh, like dependency check uh, right. So, first uh, we integrated DevOps process right. So, like here you can see the using the maven package uh, we are generating the uh, package and then uh, uploading package on artifactory right so artifactory uh, as you can see artifactory already we have integrated so using um, their <coughs> <coughs> sorry their api we are uploading inside the uh, jfog artifactory and then uh, we are provisioning the staging and then uh, deploying st uh, application on staging environment and then we are doing sort of UAT test right. So, as you can see uh, our whole process uh, works uh, very smoothly and, and then after once we have in uh, have a DevOps uh, pipeline we need to uh, integrate the security on every uh, stages right. So, first start with the dependency check uh, where we are doing software composition analysis. So, we are using dependency check uh, to uh, find our vulnerable libraries and vulnerabilities and those vulnerabilities uh, are feeded inside the archery right. So, if you go in the dependency check and you can see it's using the project name as a uh, commit ID because of the commit ID is one of the unique ID for every pipeline right. So, as you can see there are total 100 uh, one <laughs> 101 uh, vulnerabilities once we fix like this comes to the 31. So, uh, using RG you can uh, go and like explore the vulnerabilities or you can mark as a false positive or you can uh, if you are integrated with your Jira ticketing system, uh, you can uh, you can raise the uh, vulnerability uh, ticket using the Jira, right? So, uh, so uh, the uh, once we have integrated everything, uh, like all the scripts and all the uh, things available on this code, so you can uh, at your home you can try your yourself because we have created this lab and uh, we are giving this uh, workshop for full day but, uh, uh, but uh, here we, ha we are getting less time like one and half hour. So, uh, we are not able to give you as a hands on session, but uh, you can you can try it your home. <coughs> so, so all the Jenkins uh, pipeline uh, like you know uh, there are multiple stages uh, where you need to give the instruction uh, to run the uh, commands or to run the scripts right. So, uh, once you uh, deploy uh, your application on, on the WAF uh, let us suppose uh, let us suppose someone trying to attack on your uh, application right. So, uh, we have already integrated uh, uh, the WAF. So, let us suppose I am trying to provide the uh, accesses uh, payload. So, it gives 403 because it is not allow uh, uh, the those payload and also you will get the notification on your on your mail. <coughs> so, I recommend you to go and try yourself at home 
uh, I hope you guys have written the URL or you just go and register it. I will uh, distribute uh, using your email. Uh, I will distribute the link of this VM and uh, I hope uh, you guys like can do more stuffs in this VM. Okay, so uh, tools of trade, uh, I have listed uh, these tools, uh, all these. So my goal was to uh, create a, like workshop using all open source tools, right? So uh, how about uh, starting your DevSecOps uh, using all open source tool without spending any extra money, right? So uh, my research, uh, I research the lots of open source tool and then optimize those tools uh, and then given uh, uh, to the our uh, client or, or someone asks uh, how to start the uh, DevSecOps in their DevOps process. So uh, what I come up with these tools and uh, I still, uh, I'm, I'm not endorsing or uh, I'm not uh, like, like I'm not uh, like recommending anything, but this is uh, all available open source. So you, uh, you can try yourself and implement uh, uh, and test uh, before going to implement it. This is uh, like vulnerability management. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, let's suppose, uh, how about uh, if uh, you wanted to select the tool uh, for your uh, DevOps pipeline or DevSecOps pipeline, right? So you need to have keep in mind these things. The tool should have API and command line access so that it uh, should be scriptable, right? The tool should be executing within a maximum time would be like 15 minutes like to be honest, uh, everyone uh, keeps saying like 50 minutes or 20 minutes, there is no standard or there is no thumbs rule. All that matter is the pipeline should finish as early as, as possible, right? The ideal state uh, would be uh, for the tool uh, does not take even a minute or second, just added in pipeline without any change required, uh, but that's not, uh, gonna happen right so in the real world so so what we are uh, going to look uh, looking for that tool can finish this scan in a smaller time amount of as possible also uh, the output should be uh, in the json format and xml format so that you can pass the uh, tool data so uh, let's talk about how uh, we go and optimize our pipeline Right, so we are adding bunch of tools, and we will end up with situation where pipeline taking lots of time. Right, so now we want to tweak them around and wanted to optimize the pipeline. So what we can do is we can run multiple parallel pipeline. We can have one pipeline which runs on every commit, and we can have another pipeline which uh, which can runs once a day. Right. Like there is one more uh, way, like another uh, pipeline which runs uh, on major commit or uh, like uh, you can uh, create a branches so that uh, so that you can is specify what branch need to be have run, right? So let's suppose uh, you have modified your uh, template or your whole website uh, UI, right? So for that, you don't need to run the software composition analysis or a static analysis because, because you have only modified the CSS, right? So you don't have to run whole uh, the, those tools, right? So this way uh, you can optimize your pipeline and only run uh, for the specific things. And also it's very important to uh, run the full uh, pipeline in a periodic way. So question is, uh, does programming language matters? Uh, depends on uh, different language. All that matter uh, is to change your tool of choice for two things, software composition analysis and static scan. And everything else is uh, same, right? So let's see here. Uh, 
uh, for Java software composition analysis and uh, static uh, code analysis all these open source uh, tools available. So, uh, for Java, PHP, Python, uh, .NET, Ruby Rails, I, I just listed down all the very uh, like uh, popular programming language, right. So, this is how our whole pipeline looks like. So, for Ruby, we have only modified uh, like uh, our SASP and uh, SCA bundle audit and using Barackman. And for PHP, we using uh, like we have modified with uh, uh, SC soft, so software composition analysis and uh, assessed. <coughs> Sorry. For uh, Python, uh, we using a uh, safety and bandit, uh, and and you can see uh, everything else is same uh, in the pipeline, but uh, only we are modifying the. Uh, uh, SASP uh, in our uh, whole uh, pipeline, CICD pipeline, right. <coughs> so, uh, that is uh, bring me uh, the next level part uh, which is a uh, cloud, right. So, when you have a cloud beside your usual attack surface, you have uh, like three more as, uh, areas to worry about, right. So, first is like identify and access management. Uh, frankly uh, speaking, there is uh, there one area which is no uh, cloud vendor going to take care of and that is your responsibility or you need to manage that. And then second area of like asset uh, inventory and then uh, the uh, third is uh, like billings. Uh, so, uh, most of the attack happen on the billing. So, you need to uh, more care about your uh, billing. So, you need to have a, a alert and all those things placed in your cloud. Now, if you, uh, you have infrastructure as a code, it allow you to perform a quick audit and you can focus a specific area like security group permission which you, you where your resource has uh, uh, running on and how you can give the permissions and all those stuffs. So, uh, so I am dealing with uh, one of my client and the uh, client uh, do not have on prem and they are using all the cloud native uh, services. So, uh, like we have come up with solution uh, whatever they are using cloud native services uh, where we need to have a uh, inject uh, security in their uh, already DevOps cloud native services. So, so the key things we need to keep in mind, no vendors are providing any services on static code analysis tool, dynamic code analysis tool, software composition analysis and vulnerability management tool. So, this is how uh, AWS cloud native uh, DevSecOps uh, uh, pipeline uh, looks like and, uh, and like and uh, start with the uh, developer, uh, uh, developers are using the uh, AWS cloud 9 ID and then uh, they are using, uh, they replace with the uh, GitHub or uh, any uh, like uh, uh, open, uh, online uh, so, uh, repository using the AWS code commit and then uh, they are using AWS code build and then uh, win we have come up with uh, two things in, in the S3 bucket. First thing uh, where uh, they are uploading their uh, binaries uh, using the S3 bucket, right. And uh, second thing uh, we come up uh, like we have to store all the open source tool in the S3 bucket and whenever we run the pipeline, it is not going to be download uh, the whole binary of the that open source tools and it is directly go and just use our S3 bucket and use the uh, all open source pipe, uh, all open source tools in our pipeline, right. So, we have integrated uh, SCA stages, SAS stages using the code build, right. So, and then uh, they are using the EC2 instances and then uh, they have AWS uh, uh, WAF and all those are written in build spec YAML file and then uh, for the deployment uh, they are using the app, appsec uh, YAML file, right. 
So uh, I have uh, I have uh, go through with the on prem. Now uh, this video is uh, for who are using cloud, right? So maybe they are using AWS or maybe they are using the uh, Google Cloud, right? So uh, everything is same. Uh, all the scripts, all the uh, code where works it is similar how the on prem implemented, right? So let's play this video. Uh, the same uh, image and this is the service uh, okay okay uh, uh, these are the services uh, where uh, we are using in the left side uh, all the devops services on the right side all the uh, like security services right So, uh, the first stage was uh, um, and second, third and all the first stage is uh, pre-commit hook using the talisman where uh, developer wants to commit uh, their like access key or any uh, by mistakenly they are committing the credentials. So, it is going to be uh, like give alerts and then uh, then using the code build, uh, we building our code and uh, storing in inside the S3 bucket, right. Now stage 2 is to do the software composition analysis, right, using dependency check. And uh, you can see uh, the similar way we are given the rule where uh, no, no more than uh, like 10 high vulnerabilities, right? And let's fix the vulnerabilities and then uh, we move forward and we remove the vulnerabilities and then move forward with the SAST and again we have found like one vulnerability. So, let's remove the, that one vulnerability and uh, we ran the our pipeline. So, we found like zero vulnerability. So, we move forward with next stage where we are running the dynamic scan and using the wasp or jap or we are using dynamic scan to uh, scan our whole application and then we are using vulnerability assessment using amazon inspector where we are uh, running a scan on our production or staging environment uh, using the ec2 instances right so inspector is uh, one of the amazon uh, uh, Amazon native services uh, where uh, it's allow you to do the uh, like like do the vulnerability assessment and uh, compliance on your EC2 instances. So already we are using that. So next is uh, like uh, we need to do the compliance on our server. Uh, so we had uh, used uh, inspect. So one scenario. In, in, in the cloud, let us suppose attacker compromise your EC2 instance using the assets brute force, right. So, how, how, how you go about and, uh, and figure out those things, right. So, uh, we are using Amazon uh, guard duty to do the alerting, right. So, let us see how it works. So, we, we can get the notification of the uh, like uh, using guard duty, we can get the notification of our uh, on if something happen or some attack happen on our EC2 instances. So uh, let's investigate. Like the important part is to uh, why this happen, uh, who have done these uh, things attack or or who are doing this attack. So so you need to have eliminate those things. So you have to in investigate uh, using their uh, logs. So, we have uh, like we are searching uh, whether it's successfully attacker able to compromise our EC2 instance or not, right. Oh, oops, sorry. Let's investigate it. We filter out. We are figuring out uh, the instance 
uh, actually being uh, compromised or not. So, we found the alert, we are confirmed. Now, we need to check whether our EC2 instance has enabled with SS password or not, because we are running I, I inspector uh, uh, and uh, whether they given uh, alert to us or not. So, we had find uh, the instance ID uh, where SS password is enabled. So, let us uh, let us investigate whether the attacker was able to log in to EC2 instance using Amazon CloudWatch logs. So, we are using CloudWatch logs uh, and uh, we can uh, automate things so that we can get the uh, actual scenario where uh, we can see uh, whether they can able to attack or not, right. So, so as you can see. Uh, here in the log, uh, there are invalid attempts happen, right. So, attacker uh, have a bunch of uh, uh, username password and they are trying to uh, brute force on uh, as such, right. And you can see uh, uh, the attacker had get the valid attempt right and and th this way we can also get uh, this user has compromised on this uh, our instance right so we can just go and uh, block those user or we can eliminate those user there are many things uh, you can do uh, with that uh, uh, like uh, uh, using the ok. So, many time you heard about uh, by mistakenly S3 bucket publicly disclose and in your S3 bucket there are sensitive data disclosed. So, how do ma uh, monitor those S3 buckets? So, they have uh, native services uh, like uh, mice. So, mice gives you alert about it and you have uh, like instances uh, you can uh, get the uh, notification on that and you can see uh, this uh, is S3 bucket have uh, publicly disclosed. So, uh, this is how mice looks like and uh, there are many more alerts where you can just uh, do things and this R3SEC is running as a lambda function uh, serverless whenever it is required uh, it is feeded the data inside the R3. Uh, in your uh, CICD pipeline, right. So, the all data has feeded. Right. So, this is how whole uh, architecture looks like once uh, you have uh, deployed your secure C, uh, CICD pipeline uh, using AWS cloud natives, right. So, uh, this is how I listed uh, all the uh, cloud native services for different uh, cloud service provider uh, AWS, Azure, GCP. So, you can go and uh, check their native services and you can implement in or in your DevOps pipeline. Okay, that's bring me uh, to the next aspect that is cultural aspect, right? So I have taken like too much uh, time around like DevOps and injecting uh, security via tools. Uh, that was my uh, like primary focus. Uh, like uh, within an open uh, source uh, space, also we can deploy lots of security checks. Um, like, however. Uh, just by deploying security ch check that going not work with it, right. So, so uh, the role of the uh, security team in uh, DevOps uh, is to eliminate the need of dedicated security team, right. So, you should not have a security team if you are running successful DevSecOps, right. Uh, and you should have people who are specialized in security, but those people should also be part of your unified team, right. So, you need to encourage mindset across the space, you need to uh, cross team, uh, cross train everyone, you need to 
build uh, allies or you need to build uh, a security champions right so uh, security champions uh, is the bridge between uh, your dev sec and operation team uh, where uh, they are a single person so you can choose from the multiple teams and you can train them with uh, like uh, maybe uh, dev uh, some of the devs some of the operation so uh, it's very important to uh, get them understand and get them know about uh, all this uh, all this uh, development security and operation because they are going to understand what's going what's going on right so so uh, also you can incentivize uh, like to your uh, internal team by doing the internal bug bounties and uh, you can sponsor uh, like uh, uh, parties if uh, your devsecops process is smoothly is going on, going uh, going on and uh, you can uh, send them multiple conferences and then uh, you can ask them to do the cross skilling and do the trainings so that they can they can get, uh, get the more knowledge from the uh, different uh, areas so uh, people uh, how to enable the security right so people process technology different aspect different things uh, in short you need have to uh, good relationship between people your process should be automated as possible with the focus on prioritizing on fixing not attempting to fix everything and your technology should flexible enough that can you move ahead and play around with things right so uh, this is uh, one generic case studies let's suppose you doing the devops you know, and uh, let's suppose there is a uh, there is a uh, one zero day vulnerability is found in your uh, open source library uh, and uh, in the may is found right and you are periodically doing the penetration testing in the middle of june and july right so uh, as you can imagine uh, your uh, your application uh, uh, contains uh, this uh, zero day vulnerability at this two month or three month right so when you are doing the devsecops uh, you run the pipeline and you immediately find the vulnerabilities uh, and you get the feedback immediately when developers uh, committed the code right and you fix the vulnerability within a uh, 24 hour or within a day right so you can imagine how this devsecops useful uh, uh, in your uh, devops process so i have taken uh, like uh, this all uh, case studies from uh, some of the companies who have already uh, uh, doing the devsecops uh, one of the like Fanimi May is uh, one of the uh, like very popular company who is doing the DevSecOps and all the case studies and all things uh, included in this uh, uh, in this talk and uh, and you can go and read about how they are doing things and one more uh, company is A ABN Armo who is also like doing the DevSecOps and uh, all the case studies and everything is in listed in this uh, workshop so uh, like uh, if you are integrating uh, security in your cloud there are misconfiguration happening in on your cloud and you can disclosing uh, your uh, sensitive data over the uh, internet right so if you have uh, doing continuously monitoring and reviewing your cloud assets, assets and configuration this could not be happen right okay so uh, this is not enough you still need uh, to follow usual bug bounty and pen testing policies because uh, those would be your feedback loops right so they will help you and understand what is going wrong and where do you go about fixing things right so i have uh, uh, listed down five images and uh, below are the five vendors 
who have claimed that they have the best DevSecOps practices, but they still running bug bounties for validation purpose. The idea is to uh, get feedback as much as possible. So, uh, so when you are deploying security tools, uh, you are deploying the pieces of code, all right. So, watch the watcher. So, you need to have, uh, uh, you need to have configured your security tool very securely in your uh, environment. If you are uh, using admin admin uh, for the uh, your vulnerability management tool, it's never work around anyone, right. So, you need to have uh, good policies and uh, you need to have uh, configure very securely. So, uh, these uh, reference I have taken uh, from uh, and uh, I created this workshop. So, uh, so the key takeaway is uh, security is everyone responsibility. Embrace security as a part of your process, use uh, feedback to improve the process and you cannot take someone else DevSecOps practice and just templatize and implement your own. You have to do your own experiment in your organization, right. So, the old saying mileage is, mileage way vary, but in DevSecOps your mileage will most definitely vary. So, I think uh, this is all about uh, uh, the DevSecOps uh, process and uh, you can contact me on, on the Twitter and you can just uh, drop me a mail uh, if you have any question anything, right. So, I think uh, you guys have already uh, uh, registered, right. Uh, I will get the email IDs or whoever uh, joining uh, today's workshop. So, within a 48 hour you will get the uh, all link and all the contents uh, and you can uh, you can check uh, uh, the everything inside the VM and uh, and you can practice on that VM and maybe you can implement uh, take the reference from that uh, scripts and all the things whatever implement in the VM and uh, uh, you can uh, utilize and uh, and you can do DevSecOps in your organization, right. Thank you. Uh, so, let us uh, have if you have questions, so uh, please ask. First a round for Anand Tiwari. So, Anand came all the way from New Delhi. Yeah, right? Bangalore. Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore. Yeah, Bangalore. Bangalore. So, um, uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Um, we've got two mic stands up on the balcony, correct? Um, or the mezzanine or whatever that's called over there. Um, so, any questions from the audience? And uh, I guess you have the unfortunate privilege of being the only thing standing between uh, these people and a, uh, a rather nice reception down the street. So, uh, don't feel badly if everyone <laughs> gets up and leaves it. Let's have a, a question or two. Was this all perfectly clear? I didn't understand any of it, so somebody yeah. must be. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay. Um, would you mind handing this? Thank you. So, first, thank you. It's very, been very informative. The first, uh, can we see the slide again uh, for registering? The URL it went by really fast. Yeah, sure. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, you mentioned periodical uh, scanning of uh, dependencies. Doesn't it make sense to have a tool that gets uh, informed about CVs, about vulnerabilities, zero day, and then it sees your bomb, your you know your applications um, uh, dependencies, and then scan them? Because zero day, if you wait until you're scheduled that you scan all your source codes. Uh, that's going to take quite a bit and you can get hit by that point. So having something that gets notification about a new zero day and scans actively your source code, um, that, that kind of, wouldn't that make sense? Okay, uh, the question is uh, like, uh, how do we get the uh, zero day notification as soon as possible and then we can go about and run these scans all over the code, right? Uh, 
my past experience uh, with my uh, product based companies, we are uh, written a script where uh, we are mon monitoring all the Twitter handles, all the Twitter uh, like timelines so, and we are monitoring the things uh, uh, whoever uh, tweet about any new attack or new uh, zero day, we will get the notification on that and then we will start working on that how to uh, do uh, like eliminate those vulnerabilities in uh, from, from our code right. This makes sense, uh, it is not like that, uh, uh, first we need to have a, uh, like prioritize things, uh, we need to understand uh, what types of vulnerability is that, maybe that uh, that zero day vulnerability is not exist in your code right. So, you have to, you have to understand what types of vulnerabilities is uh, raised in your uh, 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 like uh, whether uh, that vulnerability is uh, exist really exist in uh, your code. Let us suppose uh, strut right, uh, so strut's uh, latest ver version having some zero day vulnerability, but your application is not using Java right. So, you need not no need to use that zero day vulnerability right. So, you have to very specifically understand what types of zero day vulnerability coming right. We have more times, if you have more question let me know. So, how do you ensure that you have uh, for compliance as code specifically, how do you ensure that you have coverage across your entire application base without um, needing some type of manual process either you know during grooming or something to identify that a specific set of compliance requirements uh, applies to the app that you are working on. Okay. Uh, so, in that case uh, you need to have a very uh, like you need to have first understand how your requirement is right. So, for compliance as you ask for the compliance right. So, uh, maybe like uh, many companies are doing the HIPAA and uh, some of the benchmarks to comply. So, you need to have first goal what you are going to do the compliance uh, on, on which server uh, or which network uh, things and uh, network infrastructure right. So, so let us suppose in our workshop we did compliance on the Tomcat right. So, we are using the Tomcat uh, benchmark or whatever uh, we have a CIS benchmark, we taken the list of that benchmark and we have ran the uh, compliance uh, so that our uh, ports like those uh, ports and those uh, like uh, uh, benchmarks should be match with uh, what we are using in our production server right. So, if you are doing uh, this compliance uh, as a code in your in, uh, in your uh, organization, so you need to have uh, go and check how they are doing manual way right. So, uh, what are their policies and uh, you need to go through their policies according their policies and then you using the iron spec or any uh, automated tools and uh, you need uh, to write the uh, rules for that policy and then you can embed with your code right. So, whenever the code uh, runs in inside the pipeline it is go through all the policies and your uh, uh, whatever you given the rules right. And this way you can comply your server or maybe your ap application whatever you are running. So, let us suppose PI, PCI DSS right. So, for PCI DSS we need to have very specific things uh, like uh, uh, our payment gateway should be uh, uh, compliant properly right. So, you already have all the policy listed down, uh, you need to have only write the rules right. Hi, great presentation. Uh, Quick question, you showed a few slides where the language that you were scanning made the pipeline change, whether you were scanning Python, Java, your pipeline change. Have you found an automatic way to create the pipeline so you do not have to configure them for the language you are scanning? Uh, as such, we do not have right now any tool or open source uh, like open source uh, project, but you can create your own framework where uh, you need to be very specified with the your code right. So, let us suppose developer has written uh, code on the PHP or they written on the Ruby. 
So, you have multiple pipelines where you are running multiple uh, scanners or open source uh, tools for that pipeline. So, you need to have changed only two things software composition analysis and static scans right. So, uh, once you get listed down what uh, programming language your developers going to be used you need uh, you have created the pipeline for that right. So, whenever uh, they start programming on that specific language that pipeline going to be run right and this way you can solve it. You got it, but if uh, some engineer later on adds some Java and my pipeline was configured for Python, you know, we're not going to scan that Java uh, without modifying the pipeline that is static at this point. Okay, so uh, you can create a separate project, right? So uh, whatever you work on uh, all the script, all the automation tools for uh, so, you need to work on uh, only two things uh, for uh, for like python programming uh, you have uh, changed the safety and and also you can do the plugins right. So, where uh, you have just plugged with uh, multiple uh, tools let us suppose uh, you have given the rule or you have given the statement if developers using the python it goes to the uh, uh, your pipeline and their pipeline uh, if it is found it is python then it is going to use this tool instead of using that tool right. Great that is what I was looking for so if I will ping you offline to get yeah, a Yeah sure we will we'll discuss about this offline because uh, when I was uh, uh, giving a uh, solution to one of my client they, they wanted the same way they wanted uh, a implementation in their organization because uh, developers are oftenly use the multiple programming language right yeah any more questions i hope you guys uh, go back to your home and uh, try this vm right so in this vm uh, like i have uh, did a lot things i have written a lot of scripts and uh, those scripts are very useful to for you uh, because it's going to be give you a picture or if uh, it's you can take as a reference to implement your uh, your uh, organization thank you everyone for joining today